like to welcome you back to our life seminar. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've been encouraged by what you've learned so far. In this topic, we're going to look at five principles on how to win with your finances. Now think about it. If you can succeed in the major areas of your life, such as parenting, marriage, relationships, health, decision making, spiritual growth, emotional health, and so on, then is it possible to succeed in the area of your personal finance? Well, the answer is yes. Creating wealth begins with the desire not to live paycheck to paycheck, to avoid poverty, and to change your family tree. We are going to talk about an area that many people want to avoid, and that's the topic of money. Now, if we avoid this topic, it can lead to a lack of understanding of how to manage your money, which will then lead to a life filled with anxiety, fear, and insecurity. The number one topic that married couples argue about is money. We live in one of the wealthiest countries on earth. There is so much untapped potential, yet more and more Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. When it comes to money, people have mixed emotions. You know, for some, money's a mystery. For others, it can become a god. And still, for some, money be can become a tool to help other people. Now, money in and of itself is neutral. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Again, money in and itself is neutral. What money does is it reflects or magnifies the kind of person you already are. For example, if you're a stingy person, you'll remain stingy whether you have no money or lots of money. And if you're a generous person who likes to help people, then you will remain generous regardless of how much or how little money you have. Now, let me ask you, how many of you have ever done something stupid when it comes to money? I'm going to raise my hand. I've done lots of dumb things. Well, if you want to win with money and you want to learn how to manage your money and change your family tree, then this topic is just for you. No one wins at anything in life without a plan. If you want to win with money, then you need to do these five things. The first is know that God owns everything. The Bible tells us in Haggai 2.8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The Bible also tells us in Psalms 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. We need to understand that God is in charge of everything and we're just managers. This not only changes how we view money, but it changes how we view our relationships with others, our health, our marriage. It changes everything. One thing that I love about the Bible is this idea that God is interested in every aspect of our lives. This includes the effects that money has on us. The number one cause of divorce is fighting over money. Now with 70% of American families living paycheck to paycheck, do you think this affects the stress level in most homes? Living normal today is not going to be enough to change your family tree. Now I want you to wrap your mind around the fact that 70% or 7 out of 10 people are living paycheck to paycheck. Think about 10 people in your life. They can be family, friends, coworkers, neighbors. If you can't think about 10 people, then just maybe borrow a few friends from the person sitting next to you. This means seven out of 10 people that you are thinking about, they are living paycheck to paycheck. A recent APA Harris poll of those that live paycheck to paycheck revealed that one in five put their healthcare needs on hold because they can't pay their medical bills. The University of Massachusetts, Boston conducted a study of stress and found that those in debt are more likely to have higher diastolic blood pressure and worse physical and mental health than those who were financially secure. Did you catch this? Financial insecurity, it affects our mental health. This stress and mental health will affect all the other areas of your life. This includes your parenting, relationships, marriage, decision-making, and the list goes on. 
Friends, this is not God's plan for your life. Now, I know it's easy to look at our friends and our family and, you know, neighbors, and we think they're doing so well financially. Please know that the exterior of your family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, it doesn't tell the whole story. People will buy name brand clothing, drive a new car, live in a nice house, take family vacations, and you know what? They are one paycheck away from having a major situation in their life. And yes, they are stressed and most likely there's a lot of tension in their marriage. Again, please remember that the exterior, it doesn't tell the whole story. Now, on the other hand, you may have a neighbor that drives a 10-year-old car and it's paid for and they purchase their clothing at Target or maybe Costco. They may not look wealthy, but they have planned their life well and they have been very intentional about their finances. Now, this family is not trying to impress anyone and you know what? They're happy. As a result of planning their life well, they are not living paycheck to paycheck and their home is not filled with the same level of stress as everybody else. Did you know that most people buy things that they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't even like? Let me say that one more time. Most people, they will buy things they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't even like. Principle number two that you wanna follow if you wanna win with money is have a written plan. You need to live on a budget. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 14, 28, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. No one wins at anything in life without a plan. Winning is an intentional act. Now, if you worked for a company and your job was to do budgeting for said company and the name of the company was You Incorporated and you did the budget for You Incorporated the way you do budgeting now, would you fire you? <laughs> you know, for some, the word budget is a bad word. The reason for this is the word budget is often used in such a negative way. For example, your friends call you up because they want to know if you want to meet them at a local restaurant. And you say, I'm really sorry I can't make it tonight because I'm on a budget. Another example is when your spouse tells you that, you know, it's time to cut back on summer vacation plans and no more shopping because we are on a budget. When you think about it, these budgeting people, they're, they're not a lot of fun to be around. Now, in every relationship, you have a combination of either a spender or a saver. Now, I'm curious, and you can kind of look around where you are, are you a spender or are you a saver? Now, no matter which group you're in, having a budget helps you tell your money where it needs to go. I want you to start thinking of having a budget as a good thing. A budget gives you the freedom to tell your money where to go. If you are a natural spender, a budget permits you to spend your money on the things that you value. Now, if you're like me and you're a natural saver, you may find yourself feeling guilty about spending money. But here's what a budget does. It gives you guilt-free power to say, this is where I want to spend my money because I have put this in my budget. The third principle that you're gonna to wanna to follow if you wanna win with money is get out of debt. The most powerful wealth building tool is your income. Now, did you hear what I just said? I'm gonna repeat it. The most powerful wealth building tool is your income. When you no longer have payments as a result of debt, you can begin to have your money work for you. And the quickest way to building wealth is to avoid debt as if debt was the plague. Take a moment and think about your income and ask yourself the question, how would my life be different if I was 100% out of debt? Can you imagine no car payments, no credit card payments, no student loan payments, no outstanding medical bills? What would your life look like? Now picture your life if you had all of this and no more mortgage payment. Imagine no more arguments about money. 
I mean, if your kids go to a private school, you could pay their tuition in full every year. You could help your kids go to college debt-free. Imagine how generous you could be. Now, the money that you make will belong to you, and it's not going to belong to the bank. Now, I know what it's like to have debt. Growing up, I never really learned how to manage money, and by the time I was 21 years old, I was bouncing checks all over town. Have you ever walked into a business and had your picture on the wall so the person behind the register, they knew not to take any more checks from you? Uh, that's me right here. It's not fun. I remember having less than $10 to my name. And let me tell you, friends, that was one of the most stressful times in my life. I know what it's like to have more month than money. Friends, I've been there waiting, counting down the days until payday. It was during this experience in my life when I decided that I had it and I was going to do something about it. I had one of those never again moments and I wanted to change my life. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22 verse 7, it says, The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. The Bible says that if you have debt, you are a slave. In other words, you carry this chain around with you. Slaves don't have choices. Their financial bondage means that they have to do what other people tell them to do. When you are a financial slave, it is hard to be generous. When you are a financial slave, it is hard to sleep at night. When you are a financial slave, your life, your marriage is filled with tension. It's filled with stress. You see, here's what is happening to the average American today. When they went to college, they took out student loans to pay for their classes. And then while they were in college, they got their first credit card. And after graduation, they get their first real job and they decide to go and purchase a new car. Then they meet the love of their life when they take out another loan to pay for the wedding ring, pay for the honeymoon. And pretty soon they get tired of paying rent, so they decide to purchase a house and this adds even more debt. Soon their spouse wants a new car, and so we pile on even more debt. And by the time they're 30 years old, they have student loans, credit card debt, two car payments, a mortgage, and the stress of managing their life. In 2018, the average household debt in America, not including mortgages, was more than $38,000. Year after year, decade after decade, they will navigate their way through life while being crushed by all the debt that they have accumulated. And they get to the point that their marriage is in jeopardy. And they begin to experience anxiety and depression and they can't sleep at night. Remember friends, the Bible says that the borrower is slave to the lender. And slaves don't have choices. As a result of debt, somebody else is dictating your income for you. Because of debt, you can't put money away for retirement or help your kids receive a Christian education or go on mission trips or save for your kids' college, and soon the cycle continues. Unless you do something about this, your kids will most likely follow your example. It's time to break the cycle of debt. It's time to change your family tree. What if you were the last one in your family to ever have debt? How would that change the trajectory of your kid's life? According to Experian, a financial service company that tracks and reports credit trends for consumers and companies, Americans owe more than $1 trillion on their car loans. The average car loan is for more than $500 a month with the typical borrower choosing a 73 to 84 month loan. Now imagine this. If that same person chose to drive an older used car and they invested that $500 monthly car payment in the S&P 500 index fund, fund from age 25 to 65 and they averaged 10% return, they would have more than $3 million. This is what that new car payment is costing you. Now do the math, but now do it with two cars. According to a 2018 Chapman University study, uh, they did this survey and it revealed that 57% of Americans believe that not having enough money for the future is one of their top fears, trumping crime, snakes, spiders, and even death. 
Step four in being smart with money is live on less than you make. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. Do you know how rich people get rich? They save their money. Personal finance is 80% behavior, 20% head knowledge. What we need to do is stop caring about what other people think because Ken and Barbie, they're broke. If you want to build wealth, live on less than you make. Something else to consider, avoid all get rich gimmicks. The Bible says, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. When it comes to building wealth, it's better to use the crockpot method than the microwave method. Sports Illustrated ran an article that stated 80% of retired NFL players go broke in the first three years out of the league. Something else to consider is think before you spend. How many of you have ever been to Costco to buy like one or two items and you walk out with a cart full of items? You know, the reason they check your receipt when you leave Costco is because they want to make sure you spent at least $100. Something else to consider is save money like you mean it. Saving money is the opposite of debt. When it comes to debt, you are paying interest. When it comes to saving, you are earning interest. Now, we're looking at starting a follow-up class on personal finance. In this class, we'll be able to go into more detail on personal finance, and we'll share principles on how to build a budget, how to get out of debt, how to invest, how to make your money grow. Now, we're planning on this, so please pray that we can get this thing going. Something else you want to consider when it comes to building wealth is work hard. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 23, in all labor there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. The Bible also tells us in Proverbs 28, 19, whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. The final principle we're going to look at if you want to be smart with money is you have to live a generous life and change your family tree. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Now, some may think that they need to make more money to be more generous. Remember, money magnifies the kind of person you already are. Giving needs to be a habit that you begin no matter where you're at in your journey. John D. Rockefeller said, I never would have been able to tithe the first million dollars I ever made if I had not tithed my first salary, which was $1.50 a week. Talk about money with your spouse. Talk about money with your kids. If you have never talked about money with your spouse, it may feel a bit awkward at first. Couples need to be on the same page when it comes to good money habits. Every parent wants their kids to have it better than they did. The question that we need to ask ourselves is, how is this going to happen for my kids? If there is still breath in your lungs, then you have an opportunity to do better. You can change your family tree. You can break any negative cycle in that family tree. When it comes to finances, you don't have to be perfect to change your family tree. You do, however, need to live an intentional life and have the mindset that you want to live with purpose. You see, nobody reaches the age of 65 and becomes a millionaire by accident. They don't look at their 401k or 403b. They're not shocked that they have $2 million in it. They reach this point in their life because they lived on a budget, they spent less than they made, they saved and invested over a long period of time, this is how you win with money. The goal of saving, investing, and financial freedom should never be to impress people. The goal is not to have more stuff. The goal should be that of service. Think about it this way. What do you want to do when you retire? Ask your spouse this question. What does your spouse want to do when they retire and begin to just dream about all the incredible things you could do, the people you could bless, and watch your spouse's face light up? Did you know that couples in a healthy marriage are twice as likely to discuss money dreams together? Let me share with you what I want to do. Here are my money dreams. I want to travel. 
I want to do mission projects by building churches and building schools. I would love to volunteer at the local food bank or my local church or my local church's thrift store. When my church is putting on a project and they need to raise money, I would love to send a large anonymous donation. I want to help my kids get through college absolutely debt free. When I'm at a restaurant and I discover that my server is say a single parent and they're going back to school, I would love to leave a $100 tip for the $5 pancakes that I just ate. Now I love the sport of surfing. And I remember a couple years ago, my son, he was six, he and I were in Hawaii together and I pushed him into his very first wave and he stood up. He had the biggest smile on his face and he rode that wave all the way onto the beach. He jumped off the board onto the sand and he announced to everybody within, you know, ears distance, I'm the greatest surfer in the world. I want to travel with my son. I want to go and surf some exotic destinations. Now, maybe you've always wanted to start a business. Whatever it is, you can start today to plan for a better future. You can change your family tree. When we talk about our financial dreams, we get excited. Now, we're hoping to start some financial classes once this life seminar is over with to help encourage you on your journey. But for now, I want you to experience a wake-up call. What kind of legacy do you want to leave your kids and your grandkids? Is this the legacy right here that you want to leave? Do you want your kids and your future grandkids to be in financial bondage? Or do you want to change your family tree and start a legacy where you are the last person in your family tree to ever have debt? The Bible says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. It's time to break the cycle. It's time to break the cycle and change your family tree. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we bow our heads now, I pray for those that are watching this. I pray, God, that you would speak to their hearts and that they would know that they can do this. Sure, the journey is difficult at times. The, the principles are simple, but they can do this, Lord. Inspire them. Help us to get out of debt. Help us to avoid debt like the plague and help us to live a life that is worthy, a life that changes our family tree, that breaks the cycle of debt. Help us do all that we do to bring glory to you. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.